All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Substance Painter. Just open up your Adobe Substance 3D Painter here. And what you wanna do is just click Start Painting right over here. Once you do that, you might get this default file over here and you just wanna go up to Files, go to New. Once you go to New, you wanna to go to a default template. Just go to this template, ASM PBR Metallic Roughness Starter Asset right here. Change your document resolution from 1024 to 2048. And then you don't need to import cameras, just keep that turned off. Everything else should be fine. Before you go ahead and click OK, because you can't, you have to select your file, OK? And from here, just select your uh, Rhino export file. You should have exported it as a FBX. So just mine's gonna be right here. Click OK and give it a second to load. Depending on your computer speed, it might take a while. Just let it load, let it do its thing, uh, and then you should get something like this. Now, this might be a little bit intimidating. There's a lot going on. Yours might look a little bit different. Your assets menu might be at the bottom like this or place it wherever you like, okay? And these might look a little bit different. Now, you might be missing a few things, and if you are, you just go to view, and then there's a bunch of things here that you might wanna add. For example, display settings is pretty nice, and you get something like that, and you could just you know, stick that where you find it to be fitting. I'm gonna stick it kinda down here. Okay, and uh, this is really just for renderings. You don't have to worry about that for now. And then, you know, this is similar to Photoshop. You have uh, layers right here. You have your assets, so these are your different objects. If I turn this off, Material 9 is this object, plastic is this. These are layers in the way you understand it in Rhino. It's not layers in the way you understand it typically in Photoshop uh, where things add on top of each other and they can multiply to add layered effects on a specific object layer, if that makes sense, right? So you have your object layers, which I'm gonna call these things. That's not really how that's understood, but that's the best way to explain it um, in this case. Um, and then you have your actual colors and texture layers right here. Okay, now we don't have to worry about that too much uh, for now. And then you have a property of your paint. Let me kind of move this up. You can always adjust this. If you're on a laptop, this might be really, really squeezed in. So you just have to kind of get used to it. Now, within each one of these things, actually, I'm going to move display settings here. So now it'll just be a different tab. You can move those around. Uh, you have a few things up top. The most important one will be this camera right here, this rendering. Uh, if you don't see it, I believe you can kind of find rendering uh, right here in mode. There's painting mode and there's rendering using iRay, F9, F10. Uh, but again, if you don't find this camera right here, uh, you could always find it up in mode, okay? So there's another thing that you should be aware of. So there's perspective orthographic views. You have 3D, 2D. Yours might come in like this with the unwrapped uh, UV. So we'll just go to 3D only. And again, if you don't have this up here, you could just click F2, okay? So F1 gives you both split screens, F2 is the one, and F3 is the unwrap UV. So just go to F2. And then you have a set of things uh, to the side. You have brushes, you have this kind of erase tool, you have projection. Polygon feels useful to kind of see your meshes. You can see this is a triangulated mesh, okay? Uh, usually you want them to be quads, but for now we're not gonna worry about that. If you're coming in from Rhino, you're gonna be using triangulated surfaces if you have a NURB. Otherwise, you'd mesh and then quad remesh it. But for now, we're gonna unclick that. You know, that's not very important. We'll just go back up to brushes. Now, if you go ahead and grab one of these materials like aluminum and just drag it over an object, it's going to select everything in that plastics object layer and give it this material. If I grabbed artificial leather, it's gonna do the same thing, right? If I grab brass and put it on the other object over here, it's going to change it. Now, uh, there are a few settings in here, like tiling. For example, if I go back to, um, where was it here? The artificial leather, be sure you select it. You can go ahead and change the tiling. Let me see if I can get a better view. If you go up and down, the tiling changes, as you can see. Again, I wouldn't worry about that too much. Just don't make it read very blurry or weird like that. Just make sure it's kind of something crisp and I'll try to paint on top of this. But you notice as I'm drawing over it, you're getting weird spots being highlighted. Uh, that's really just the cause of it not unwrapping pretty well. So go ahead and fill one of everything with a material. So I haven't really covered how you actually move around in this. If you hold down Alt and right click, you'll zoom in and out. If you Alt and left click, you can rotate and Alt and middle click will be panning. And those are the kind of the primary commands to move around. Okay, so now that we know how to move, we'll just go back to rendering. All you need to do is just come up to this little camera and go to rendering. This is a uh, real-time render engine, meaning that it's going to update automatically and it should be relatively quick samples of you know, your end result and give it a second and it'll start rendering. One thing you'll notice is that this background right here, this is the HDR sky. We can turn that off. Everything up here really shouldn't be adjusted. You might want to change your uh, overall kind of view resolution right here. You could see you could just adjust that. I probably wouldn't touch it for now, but this is where you're going to save the rendering. We'll do that at the end. But anyway, you want to come down to environmental settings. Right now I'm at this kind of default HDR. If I change the HDR, the background changes, but so does the type of light, the color of the lighting. 
Uh, and this is very important. And you can hold down a shift and then left, uh, sorry, shift and right click, and you get this little arrow back and forth, and that just changes the kind of directional lighting that you're getting from the HDR map sky. This environmental rotation does the same thing as shift and right click. I wanna come down to ground or clear color. If you turn on clear color, you could change the background. So now you're not getting the background noise from the HDR, but you're still getting the light parameters from the HDR, but you're just not getting the background color and image. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change this to like a black, or you could change it to a white. Obviously, this is up to you. If you have black, you're not going to see the shadows at the bottom. Keep it at white for now and then uh, get out of this by clicking here. And so you can turn off the ground so you don't get any of the ground shadows, but I'm going to keep it on kind of like that. And then uh, the next aspect we want to cover is camera. Camera, you have a few things. I mean, field of view. This is just kind of getting you closer and further away. This is kind of working like a camera. I'm not going to touch focal length and focal distance, but I will show you aperture. Aperture is going to give you a sense of depth of field. So if you increase it a lot, you start getting a blur. And if you hold down control and the middle mouse button, be able to control where that depth of field is coming from. You see now I have it in the back over here. Uh, if I want to get this clear up front, you just click control middle button here. So you just kind of click around where you want it, mess around with the aperture. You know, I want to move this up too high, but maybe something like this, get a little bit of blur. So then you want to turn on activate post effects. So click that. And then you'll see, uh, you might have these check boxes. If you're using a laptop, you might not see the check boxes. You might have to kind of scroll to the right to see them, but you want to be sure to turn these on. So I'm going to turn on vignette for you. And you can see if you increase the strength, you kind of get this vignette coming on the edge. Okay. You don't need to kind of blast that. If you want a little bit of it, that's fine. Um, and then you're going to turn on, uh, you can turn on tone mapping. Oh, sorry. I turn on glare. So glare gives you this obviously glare effect. It gives you this lens flare esque effect. So you can kind of change this to make it more intense, less intense. I'm gonna keep that on. And then there's tone mapping up here, color correction, uh, all that can be done in the render itself in post-production mode, okay? And that's pretty much it. Uh, I don't think anything else is super important right now. That's kind of the, the quick description of how you would use this. If you don't see these settings, they're in display settings. Um, you may not have that, that might be, you know, closed down, we'll close that. And to get that, you go to view display settings. And once you have that, you could just throw that in here. All right, so now you want to just click Save Render. You just save it whatever you want to save it as. And if you save it as a JPEG, you'll get the white background. You'll get the kind of HDR background. If you save it as a PNG, you're just going to get a transparent background. Uh, but for now, it really, uh, you can just kind of save it as a JPEG and use whatever color background, especially if you're choosing it. That'd be easier. That's pretty much it. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching.